I really try to put the blinders on to the news and just react off of what I'm seeing on the chart, price rules. Because price is basically reflecting anything that the market knows about itself. And right. the market can only tell us what it knows about itself. And welcome back to Ninja Trader Live. Today, we welcome the return of Dean Rogers from Case Company. How are you, Dean? Hey, doing well, Tom. Really good to join you all again. I enjoy this so much. You mentioned energies and metals. I know that you could do chart analysis on anything, right? But we're going to focus on energies and metals. We were looking at silver, and I'm looking at this yeah, great silver chart. Yeah, I brought chart. up the silver chart because I heard one of your viewers was asking about silver, and I thought, ah, silver's got some cool little setups right now. Today, what I wanted to focus on, I'll show a little bit of our case stat wear indicators and stuff like that, but really wanted to focus in a little bit more on what really made me fall in love with technical analysis. So when I very first started working with Case & Company almost 25 years ago, Miss Case started showing me Fibonacci stuff. You know, Fibonacci extensions, retracements, those kind of things. And that's what she based a lot of her wave formations and that kind of stuff. Back then, we just did WTI, crude oil, and natural gas. Now we've developed in house models and programs that allow us to do this on a whole bunch of stuff. So, all the different base and precious metals, all the different energy markets. I didn't know anything about technical analysis. I didn't know anything about the futures markets. The only futures markets when I was in my interview with them was they asked me if I knew the futures markets. And I told them, well, I know frozen concentrate orange juice from that movie <laughs> Trading Places. But uh, that that was about all I knew. So it was a steep learning curve, but this is what, you know, I'm a big math guy. My background's in computer science and programming. And, you know, this really was like neat, you know, so it's something I have a lot of passion for. It's probably my favorite part of what I do is this analysis. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that, you know, and we'll look at some of the indicators and stuff too. But the first thing I have up here is that silver chart. And you'll notice that it's pretty blank right now. The only thing that I have on is our case swing indicator. When I start looking at a market and when I'm starting to do some analysis, I kind of like to look at a very blank chart. The swing indicator can be adjusted to various swing sizes and things like that. This is part of our case statware package. It's something that allows me to kind of look at the waves and we can kind of see that we have a five wave formation coming up here from the 2739. I'm not in love with the idea that it's a five wave because it doesn't fit all of the criteria of the pure Elliott wave, you know, where you have waves one, three, and five break down into five sub waves and two of the three impulse waves have to be equal. And, you know, there's a lot of rules around Elliott, right? So I'm not a big Elliottitian, not that I don't believe in it, but I look for five wave counts, but a lot of times they might be nested three wave counts where we have, you know, an ABC within a larger structure, ABC, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm not too concerned with, hey, five wave trend, three wave correction, those different kind of things. Right off the bat, we can see this, hey, if this is a three wave correction, that correction should be complete. Well, it might be the case because we do, we had this RB18, we saw it bounce and retrace. So when we had that retracement at the time coming off of that low, it held right around the 38% retracement. Now right. I look at slightly different retracements than some people. When I learned this, Cynthia taught me instead of 23.6, we use 21% because it's a Fibonacci number. We also use 78 and 89. That's just what I've gotten used to. These are the numbers that we use. The 38, 50, and 62. For me, as far as retracements are concerned, the 38 and the 62 are most important. Generally, a correction is going to, like a simple correction is going to hold the 38. An extended correction will have to hold the 62. If we end up closing above the 62, that tells me that that move down is more than likely complete. It's probably done. And that we're shifting directions in the bigger scheme and bigger picture, right? Right now, the other thing that we have is we have right down at that 3019, we bounced up off of 3018. We held that 38. We came down. We had the big down candle day, kind of a bearish engulfing line, although, you know, it's within a down move. So I'm not going to put too much weight in saying that it's a reversal pattern like we had up here. Came down. We had the move back up on Friday. Friday. When I was looking at this on Friday, this is one of those things I kind of took with a grain of salt because I was saying, well, look, you know, we have that double bottom. We had that move up, but it's kind of had some downward momentum to it. Maybe we're going to try to test that 3014 again. We started coming back yesterday, was able to hold Friday's midpoint on a closing basis. Today, we're pushing back up. So the thing that we have right now that looks interesting to me, at least here on the daily chart, and I know that you all were looking at intraday charts, and that's fine, you know, from a day trading standpoint, intraday trading. But what I'm trying to develop here is kind of a sense of market direction. And are we getting a reversal into a new trend up? Are we going to break to the downside again and break down? So right now, in my mind, I can immediately say, well, hey, look, if we break that 3014 double bottom, if we close below that, that negates the double bottom. We're probably moving a lot lower. 
And at that point, I'm going to start looking at my extensions for what would be this new primary wave down. Because when I'm looking at a primary wave, I want to see the largest corrective leg of that right. wave. And it might be a five wave down. You know, we could say one, two, three, this is four. And then now one of five, two of five, three of five, maybe extending whatever else, right? But we know that if it breaks that 3014 area, we're probably going to be moving down towards this 2873. It's going to take some time, but this is kind of a bigger picture view right now. Otherwise, if we can move above and close above the 32035 swing high, that's going to confirm the double bottom. And at that point, I would think that we're having a reversal back to the upside. So if we break above this equal to target or the 32035, we're going to see an extension to the upside. So our target for that double bottom is 3380. So whenever we're looking at a double bottom pattern, right. we basically have the 3014 is our double bottom between the 3010 and the 3018. I'm just splitting the difference. We take that distance between 32035 and the 3014. We add that difference to the 32035 swing high. That would give us something right up around 3381 as our target for the double bottom. What's that going to do for us? That's going to push us above the 62% retracement, mm. which I was just saying a few minutes ago, when we get above that 62% retracement, that's going to tell me that that move down is most likely complete. Right. I've built kind of a trading framework in my mind with this. Explaining the double bottom was excellent, right? If you want to do this in other markets, if you identify those two places, form that double bottom, you're mm -hmm. looking for the highest point between them in the case of a bottom. You look at right. the highest point between them and you've kind of boxed out an area that we might be range bound here. But if we break out of that range, the thing about patterns is we like to use them for targets right? It's not right. just enough that we break out, but can we use this information to find a place where the market will go? And that's why Dean had that 200% retracement, because it's just taking that move from the high of the double bottom to that bottom and saying, okay, well, if that's 100%, let's make it 200%. And I like that idea of negation, right? These Fibonacci retracements aren't always targets. They can right. also be confirmation of negative things, right? This downward trend is essentially done mm -hmm. if we can close above or trade completely above that 62% level? Well, the biggest thing that I look at, that's an excellent point, is the bigger thing that I'm looking for is confluence. And what I mean yes. by confluence is I'm looking at lots of different things. Like usually I would have moving averages on here. I'd have like the 20, the 50, 100 to 200, maybe some indicators and stuff like that. Candlestick patterns. So like completion and confirmation points of candlestick patterns. All right. of these things we plug into our models that we've built internally. And then it looks for confluence points. And we know that that 32 2035 swing high is very important. But we can also see that that's sitting just a, just below the 38% retracement, the equal to target. So we've got some confluence and also some better examples of that here in a minute on some other charts. We know where these confluence points are. It tells us where the big support, the big resistance are. And a lot of times, like you said, these aren't just targets for where the market's going to go, but they can also, especially with the retracements, tell us whether or not a move up or down is in trouble. You know, if right. we close above that 38% retracement, well, not only are we confirming the double bottom, but we're also in a situation where it's starting to give us a warning sign that, hey, this moved down, something's changing, sentiment is changing. And now we're going to try to really push to the upside to see if we can fulfill not only the target of the double bottom, but also get above that 62% retracement. So right. some interesting things going on here right now with silver, but to try to change it up a little bit, I know you guys were looking at crude earlier. Crude is one of those markets right now. We've been in a range and I have a lot of stuff on the chart here. I know it's very congested. <laughs> this isn't like the chart that I would be trading off of, so to speak. This is my chart that's kind of helping me set up my framework right. for the trading. And I think that we have to remember, you know, we have trending markets up and down. But then we also have a neutral market. And neutral markets are, they're extremely frustrating. Like crude has been frustrating the heck out of me for the last month and a half because it's just been range bound. And each time the market has looked like it's ready to break either higher or lower out of that range, we've seen a reversal in the opposite right. direction within the range. And that's looking like it's going to be the case again this week. We had come down right around that 67.90 area. We had the smaller than target or the 61.8 projection of the wave down from 72.41. Now, in studies that Ms. Case and I have done over the years, generally speaking, once you close beyond that smaller than or the 61.8, it depends on the market. You usually have around a 70 to 75 percent chance of extending to at least the equal to or the 1.00, which would have been down here around 65.60 and a confluence point with the 61.8 wave down from the 77.04 high. What is this telling me? Well, if we were able to close below the 67.90 area, we should break lower out of this range. We have a little double bottom here. 
right now, right around 66.40. It's arguable whether or not it's a double bottom, but I would call it a double bottom. And the confirmation point for that is 72.41. Well, two weeks ago, we had this wave up from the 66.32. It overcame at 60. It closed above the 61.8. That would have pushed us up to the 72.60 level for the equal to or the 1.00 or the 100, which is also the 62% retracement of the move down from 77.04. And now it's also sitting right around the 100 of the wave up from the 66.53, I think it is. So again, looking at all of this, what we can look at and say is, you know, right now we know the boundaries of the range. And so from a trading standpoint, if, you know, even if this were an intraday chart, it's the same concepts apply. We know where we can place our orders to get in and get out, whether or not we're going to be breaking higher or breaking lower out of this range. So right now, you know, one of the levels that I like is 71, because if we close above that 71, we should be trying to push up towards that 7280 area where we have that confluence between all of these different targets plus the confirmation point of that double bottom, right? So again, we're looking at a number of different waves and retracements and patterns that give us these confluence points. We know where the breakout points are. And so we can, in our mind, be ready for that breakout. Crude mm -hmm. is unique in that there seem to be such varied influences. There's geopolitical yeah. influences. There's economic influences. There's what I call our artificial influences like OPEC+. Mm -hmm. plus. And yet we're looking at it technically, which, you know, as technicians, you think, well, all the news is baked in the cake. It's going to come out right. in the wash in the chart. Right. I've noticed that this has been unusually range bound, right? Last year, it had nice moves. It would move up and then it would settle down to a $2, $3 range or maybe $4 yeah. range. Here, it looks like it just doesn't know where to go. And you have these higher peak lows. You have these lower peak highs. At some point, buyers come in. I guess is my point. Sometimes it might be difficult to reconcile how we listen to the news and how we have all these different influences and we have these technical indicators that say, okay, if it goes this way, then we have this target. If we go that way, we have that target. As a technician, I know that's like perfectly fine, but right. can you explain like how do we react to news as technicians when it's happening? In a perfect world, I'd be in a vacuum because like you said, as a technician, it's all baked in the cake, right? And we're reacting to what the market is showing us, yes. you know? So the way that I always try to explain it to people is like, if I have information that I think is bullish, you know, from a headline news or whatever else, if I react to that and I buy the market because of that, if nobody else is buying the market because of that same news, the market's not going to really do anything, right? Right. But if enough people see that information and they start reacting to it in the same way that I do, they start buying it because they think it's bullish news or they start shorting it because they think it's bearish news, the market's going to react. Yeah. So for me, I really try to put the blinders on to the news and just react off of what I'm seeing on the chart, price rules, because price is basically reflecting anything that the market knows about itself. And right. the market can only tell us what it knows about itself. And so it gets difficult with things like crude because of all the geopolitical pressures. You know, that's one of the big things right now with crude. Crude to me in the big picture would probably be a lot lower. I would think that we would probably be in the low 60s, if not even the 50s at this point, if it were not for the conflict that we have in the Middle East right now between Israel, Iran, Pakistan, you know, all these different kind of things going on there. You know, there's lots of different different news going on, the macroeconomics, what's going on with the dollar, interest rates, those kind of things. As a technical analyst, it's a lot to absorb. It's a lot to take in. So I really try to put the blinders on. Again, in a perfect world, I wouldn't even read any of the news. Really, the only reason I do is because I have to be able to speak with clients about it intelligently and be like, well, okay, you know, the geopolitical pressures right now, whatever else, right? Sure. For me, it's looking at these markets from a purely technical standpoint. Excellent. Dean, this has gone way too fast. Um, always thanks again for coming in and uh, always a pleasure Tom. sharing your information yeah this presentation is for educational purposes only all of the symbols trading ideas and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice past performance may not be indicative of future results all of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of NinjaTrader, LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade futures with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the NinjaTrader website.